Hi, my name is Dan with Carbon Method, and today we're going to talk about a revolutionary coating system called Carbon Coat. Carbon Coat is a graphene coating for tools in your workshop. We're talking about cast iron, stainless steel, anything that's metal, anything you don't want to rust. On a cast iron table, Carbon Coat absolutely eliminates wax and other paraffin sprays and things like that. By removing the need to maintain your cast iron, you're going to gain valuable time in your shop. Let's face it, maintaining cast iron with paste wax is annoying. You're constantly applying, buffing, stripping, applying, buffing, etc. With Carbon Coat, you don't have to do that anymore. Carbon Coat is the ultimate in protection for cast iron tools. Today, let's go through the process of applying this revolutionary coating system on a table saw. We're going to apply Carbon Coat to this table saw. The first step is to remove any other coatings that may have been on the saw. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Uh, you can use chemicals or you can use abrasion. We've used 3M pads to strip this surface all the way back to bare metal. We've done that on the cast iron and on the extension wing. Then we took denatured alcohol and we removed all of that debris. You can use mineral spirits or isopropyl, anything to just get all of the gunk off the saw. Now we're gonna get started with our carbon coat application. Before we move on, we're gonna put on our gloves. And this is really important because this is, this is cast iron, it rusts. The primary thing we want to avoid is transferring oils from our skin onto our cast iron. If that happens, eventually the cast iron will rust and it will be under the carbon coating system. So we're gonna put on our gloves and we're gonna leave them on until we're completely finished with the application process. We're gonna start with Carbon Cleanse. Carbon Cleanse is a proprietary cleaning solution that removes solvents, waxes, oils, anything that might be on the table saw. So to get going, we're just gonna spray this surface down, then we're gonna take a, a, a rag and we're gonna wipe it up. We're gonna do that twice to make sure that we get rid of anything that might be there contaminating the surface. Just thoroughly saturate that saw. I mean, it's not an exact science, but we wanna make sure that we get very adequate coverage here. The key to a, to a long lasting carbon coat application is making sure that our preparation is right. The last thing we wanna do is carbon coat the saw and then see rust in the future because our prep work wasn't right. So we're just gonna wipe this down and then we're gonna allow that to dry. And then let's do it again. After the second spray, we're gonna let that sit and air dry. Sometimes carbon cleanse can leave streaks, so we're just gonna buff those off because we wanna start with a very clean base. So in order to start carbon coating, we need a bottle of carbon coat. This happens to be a one ounce. We need an applicator pad. It's the same material on both sides. The color difference just helps us to determine which side we've used and then microfiber buffing towels. So let's get started. Now carbon coat is a graphene coating, so it's actually black. The graphene can sometimes settle out of the mixture, so we definitely want to shake it. And we want to shake it every time we apply it to the applicator. And to make it fun, we added some BBs. So let's talk about application technique. The saw is broken up into different sections and we want to use those sections to our advantage. Carbon coat flash dries very quickly, so we have to work in small, minute areas to make sure that we get nice, even application. So to start, we're going to shake up that bottle. We're going to take our applicator pad. 
And then we're just gonna shake some carbon coat onto the applicator pad. When we look at this panel, the first thing we're gonna do is draw a box. That first initial swipe is gonna have more material in it than any other wipe. Then we're gonna take that well line and we're just gonna pull it up to fill in the space that we've outlined. Then we're gonna rotate 90 degrees and go perpendicular to those initial strokes. This helps us make sure that we're getting even application. We're spreading that material out and that every square inch of this panel is coated. We're looking for a little bit of drag. I'm starting to feel it. The solution starts to tack and you can feel it's starting to cure. And after you've done that, we're gonna let that sit for about 60 seconds. After that sat for about 60 seconds, we're gonna take our applicator pad and we're gonna put it on a 45 degree angle and then we're gonna draw it across the work surface to wick up any high spots or spots where there might be more material off of the cast iron. This is called leveling. And we're gonna level this surface, overlapping our strokes to make sure that we don't have high spots. And then after that, we're gonna allow that to cure for about 60 seconds before we buff it off. All right, so that section is cured for about 60 seconds. Now we're gonna take a brand new, fresh, clean microfiber, we've folded it into fourths, and then every single time we buff off a layer of carbon coat, we're gonna use a fresh side of this towel. So by folding it into fourths, it gives us a lot of fresh squares to buff off with. So let's get started. It's very simple. We're just gonna take a circular motion. We're gonna buff off the carbon coat. It's a lot like buffing off a of paste wax. You kind of feel it release and then it starts to slick up. Now that might be a little less apparent on the first coat because we've got a lot of penetration. Believe it or not, cast iron is quite porous, which is one of the reasons why it rusts so much. And the graphene in the carbon coating system does a really nice job of filling those pores. And so we're just gonna buff until we feel it release. It's like a slickness, like buffing out a paste wax. Now that we've applied the first layer of carbon coat to this section, we're gonna move into this center section here. Now overall, we're gonna go section by section, layer by layer. We recommend three to four layers of carbon coat for the entire saw. That gives us the best protection and longevity. So let's move on to the center section. Again, we're gonna take our carbon coat. We're gonna shake that up. And we're gonna shake it onto the applicator pad. Again, we're gonna come in with our first stroke acting as a well line. We're gonna draw a box, and then we're gonna draw from that well line across the piece, making sure we get adequate coverage. You can go right over the zero clearance insert on your saw because we wanna coat that too because the, one of the cool things about carbon coat is it's really, really slick. And after we've done that initial draw from the well line, we're gonna turn perpendicular 90 degrees and just evenly distribute that carbon coat. We're gonna let this sit for about 60 seconds and then we're gonna level it. We're gonna tilt the applicator on a 45 degree angle. We're gonna draw it across the surface, allowing the applicator to wick up any high spots in the coating. We don't want a lot of pressure here. Just glide across. No downward force is needed at all. Now, we're gonna let that coating sit for about 60 seconds. 
After about 60 seconds, we're gonna take our microfiber buffing towel, we're gonna open it up or turn it over, make sure that we're on fresh material, and we're gonna buff off the carbon coat. We're gonna go in small circular motions, light and easy. Not a lot of pressure is required here. We're just looking to buff off the carbon coat. It's gonna feel a lot like buffing off of paste wax again. Now getting in here, it's a little bit more difficult. So we're just gonna go slightly smaller scale to avoid all these gaps. I wanna buff it off until we feel that slickness. It's starting to feel really good now. And now that that section is done, we're gonna move over to this one. Remember to shake, shake up the carbon coat. We're gonna treat this cast iron section here like it's a single section. Then we're gonna come over and coat the extension wing. So now because of that, we're going to have an area where these two sections overlap each other. So we'll go through how to deal with that. I'm gonna use the left side as the well line. What I don't wanna do is put my well line right here in my overlapping space. That's gonna help us reduce the risk of having high spots in this overlapping area. We're coming over and we're just drawing our box. We're gonna pull from that well line over making sure we're getting adequate coverage. We're gonna rotate 90 degrees and cross hatch this backwards. And you can go up and down or back and forth. Or just wanna make sure that we're getting adequate coverage and we're gonna continue until we start to feel some resistance. The coating is gonna tack up as it starts to cure and I'm starting to feel that now. So I'm gonna finish this out and we're gonna let that sit for about 60 seconds. We're gonna put our applicator at a 45 degree angle and then we're just gonna pull the excess material off the surface. No pressure is needed here, just light and easy, just enough to wick up any excess material. Now, we're gonna let that sit for about 60 seconds. On a fresh side of your buffing towel, Let's buff off this coating. Small circular motion, like buffing off a of paste wax. We're just looking for that slickness to appear. Now the important part when we're coming over here to this overlapping area is to really come in and buff it out. We want to open it up and just kind of blend it with the uncoated area. And just like that. Now, let's get this extension wing. We're going to shake up the carbon coat and we're going to add it to the applicator pad. Now because this is the same layer, we can use the same side of the applicator pad. Once we get to the second layer, we want to use a fresh side of the applicator or a brand new applicator. Now, because this is our overlapping line, I'm gonna draw my well off of this edge. Again, that helps us eliminate or reduce the amount of material on this overlap, which will help us reduce the chances of high spots. So we're gonna pull the material over from this well line, like we did on every other panel. And then we're gonna come back at a 90 and just cross until we start to feel that tacky feel. And now we're gonna let it set for about 60 seconds. 
And now that that sat for 60 seconds, we're gonna buff it off. We're gonna keep buffing until we feel that loosen up, little slickness. And there is a different feel when you coat the, the, the extension wing versus when you're actually on cast iron. It's, it has a different feel. When we come to this overlapping line, we're just gonna blend it out. And that is our first layer. So we're gonna let this set for about 60 minutes, and then we're gonna come back with our second layer. So we just finished our first layer of carbon coat on this table saw, and there's some things to note. You can coat your rails, front and back. That actually gives you a nice amount of glide when you're moving your fence around. You can coat your miter slots by turning that applicator pad sideways. And we suggest you do all of those things. The more time you spend, the better the coating will be in the future. Take your time with the application, have fun. This coating lasts for a very long time. And if properly maintained, will likely outlive the tool it's on. So with that being said, we're gonna get ready for layer two and uh, we're gonna roll a little montage. Right, Earl, roll the montage. All right. We applied four layers of carbon coat and we've allowed it to cure for 24 hours. We coated the cast iron top, the extension table, the rails, and even the fence. You can even coat the cabinet if you want. While carbon coat provides unparalleled protection and a very slick surface, we developed Carbon Glide to further reduce that friction because a very slick saw is a safer saw. So we're gonna apply Carbon Glide. Now Carbon Glide is gonna give us super, super slick performance on the saw, and it's also going to act as an active wear layer. That's gonna prolong the carbon coat that we just applied. To apply Carbon Glide, we're just gonna spray it on the saw. Don't be stingy. You don't have to worry about it rusting because it's carbon coated now. Then we're gonna take a blue shop towel and we're just gonna spread out that coating. You know, we're not really trying to wipe it up. We're just trying to spread it out and evenly distribute it. After it's been evenly distributed, we're just gonna go and wipe up any excess. We're gonna allow Carbon Glide to just air dry for about 30 to 60 seconds. Then I'm gonna come back in with a microfiber towel. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of Carbon Glide on the towel. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna buff that Carbon Glide to a shine. You can do multiple layers of this. Um, the more you add, the slicker it will get and the more protection you will get. You can reapply Carbon Glide every week, every two weeks, or every month. It's totally up to you. Just depends on how much you use your saw. So that is the carbon coating system. We applied four layers of a carbon coat, and we allowed that to cure for 24 hours, and then we followed it up with Carbon Glide. We recommend recoating with carbon coat every six to 12 months. This will provide continuous, long-lasting protection for your tools in your shop. It's gonna save you time, it's gonna save you money, and you're never going to have to wax a tool again. Welcome to the future of nano protection.